Welcome to the Kansas State University Dairy Teaching Research Center. It was constructed before 1977 and the first cows occupied in this space in 1977 when cows were located from our main campus facility to this site which is about two and a half miles north of campus. We milk approximately 250 Holstein cows. Uh, most of the cows are milked three times a day with the exception of the late lactation cows. Our average production is greater than 32,000 pounds of milk annually and we average in most years during six to eight months of the year more than 100 pounds of milk per cow. We have nine full-time employees and a number of part-time students who work at the facility to milk, feed, and care for our cows. What you see here are calf hutches in which our individual calves are fed twice daily and maintained in individually until they're approximately seven weeks of age, in which time they're weaned into some super hutch pens. Our milking parlor originally was a double four herringbone parlor that has been refitted to now milk uh, 12 cows at a time or double six. It's actually a double six parabone parlor in which we milk our cows. We usually have one full-time person and a student or two full-time people milking it at any time. The milking room contains two bulk tanks so we can separate milk if we have to for various experiments. Our milk is picked up uh, by DFA. About 85% of it goes to a plant in Wichita. The remaining 15% goes to a campus uh, processing facility in Call Hall. This is an aerial shot showing uh, the roof, roofs over uh, individual pens. The individual pens will house uh, 60 cows apiece in a freestall housing bedded with sand. Uh, and the cows face each other. Uh, the freestalls are cared for and bedded regularly to maintain, re to reduce the incidences of mastitis. The grooving in the concrete was retrofitted a few years ago to prevent slipping of cows. Our dairy mill, as you can see in the background, is no longer being used. It, it will eventually be uh, raised. You can see here a number of grain bins and our special needs barn uh, that we'll uh, talk about later. At one time, the Kansas Dairy Herd Improvement Association Milk Component Laboratory occupied part of that space. As we walk towards the west here, you can see uh, one of the cows uh, taking in some salt content, uh, free choice at the end of one of the pens. And we're approaching now our close-up pen, or what we call our maternity barn. Maternity barn is loose housing, but also has available some Instatec feeding units that can measure both feed intake, orts, and water intake for, for example, transition studies where uh, cows are maintained there during the last three weeks of gestation and then can be moved elsewhere for individual feeding into our tie stall barn. You can see now uh, some of our pens that are shown here. These are our two uh, top fresh pens. Uh, first lactation cows on the left and older lactation cows on the right. These would be our cows that are maintained here until about 150 days in lactation if they're not on some other experiment. Uh, we have lockups in on the pen as you see here, but they're generally not used for what we've been doing in the past. You notice that these, these cows have a cow sensor ear tag in their left ear. It allows us to measure uh, rumination and feeding time, resting time, estrus, as well as give us an ear skin temperature uh, on the cows to help us in monitoring health and certainly estrus detection so we can inseminate cows at the appropriate time. The cows are fed a diet that consists of corn silage, uh, sil triticale silage, alfalfa, concentrate mix, whole cotton seed, and minerals and vitamins include in addition to 
a, a sweet brand product, uh, uh, corn gluten meal. This is our commodity building here where we make, where we store some of our feeds. We store our, our, our weekly supply of alfalfa, the sweet brand product, the whole cotton seed and our high grain mix as well as our grass, uh, uh, grass bale or what we call prairie grass here that's used for feeding our dry cows. We have four grain bins here and earlier you saw some other grain bins so we can maintain different concentrate diets. What feed you see on the ground there is brought up daily to be mixed in our total mixed ration for our cows. You can see our silage site in the background there. We put all of our corn silage and triticale sweet clover silage into bags. And you can see our hay barn there as we scan past it. Uh, this shows our replacement heifer pens. These are old replacements. They have dirt lots with a concrete feed apron. They have some uh, shelter at the top of each pens near the feed bunk. Uh, the heifers would move from one direction to the other, north to south, as they get older. This is our working area. We have a four cow palpation rail, a scale uh, to the right that you can't see. This is where we can do all of our pregnancy diagnosis, fresh cow work, uh, weighing cows, uh, inseminating cows, uh, and taking care of normal needs, including research uses. Uh, the pregnancy diagnosis and ovarian palpation that's done by myself, one of the faculty members, uh, is, is done at this site. So we bring cows down here from different pens. In the background, you can see the tie stall barn that we'll visit here shortly. Uh, and we have done some retrofitting to this facility to make, make it a little bit easier to work cows on an individual basis, whether they have health issues or for, for breeding cows at any time. We're scanning now to the holding area behind the palpation rail. And to the left is a special needs pen where we put cows that are um, sick or uh, have mastitis. It's a working table, and the barn that you see there to the left of the cow is, is our shop where we do some of our maintenance and have the storage for tools and so forth. We have a 52 cow tie stall barn uh, located on the west end of the property. In the east end of the barn, there's six box stalls that can be used for housing cows may be having issues that are in the tie stall barn and the first 32 tie stalls are available with feed boxes and individual water metered uh, cups for cows on individual feed intake experiments and then the last 20 stalls in the west end of the barn uh, have automatic weighing uh, feed bins and also their plums so that one could administer treatments to, four different treatments uh, through the water through the water cups um, this barn was renovated a few years ago uh, we have about a one inch thick uh, mat that lies on the floor and then we bed with sawdust to provide an opportunity for cows to uh, be a little bit more comfortable and prevent prevent hawk legion, lesions and other issues like that. Uh, it has a traditional gutter chain cleaner that's uh, cleaned out twice a day. So we go back out into the pens. We have our C-row consists of uh, eight pens. They can be made into eight pens of tw up to 12 cows each for uh, group pen studies. Uh, 12 cows per pen works nicely to our parlor because we milk 12 cows at the same time. And these can be utilized uh, for different pen studies in Latin square designs where you may have four pens per treatment if you have two treatments or uh, three pens per treatment if you have um, uh, three treatments. So it it's, uh, works really well uh, for conducting pen studies. Uh, pen nutritional studies. Again, you can see in that cow's ear the orange cow sensor tag that's uh, made in, in uh, the Netherlands. Uh, it's the cow manager system that we've had for some time. 
Uh, here's some of the replacement heifers, and now uh, we're scanning across the, those pens. Our special needs barn uh, contains uh, some box stalls for cows that are brought in there that may have calving difficulty. We bed with sawdust. Uh, there's a number of box stalls. There's a long palpation rail that can be used uh, occasionally for uh, palpating cows. And we will, uh, in the summertime when it gets really hot, we may have a few calves in here, as you see today, um, that are either going to be sold, mostly the bull calves are sold at, at birth, and then we have a, a uh, hoof trimming table that you can see here. Uh, our hoof trimmer, a professional hoof trimmer, comes about twice a year to address hoof issues for our cows. And so I hope you've enjoyed this uh, view of our Kansas State Dairy Teaching Research Center uh, from this aerial shot that was taken uh, some years ago before the uh, four uh, large uh, silos were, were raised because they're not used anymore.